Welcome to Healthy Eating and today we're going to talk about protein. Protein is one of the major nutrients that you need in your diet. Um, everybody needs protein and there's lots of different ways you can get protein. Um, you can get it from things like uh, meats, animal products, dairy, there's all kinds of uh, ways of getting it from, very easy to get it from meats. But then there's plant-based protein and next week we're going to talk a little bit about quinoa. It's one of my favorite uh, grains. It's actually a seed but it's one of my favorite grains and we're going to be cooking with quinoa as an alternative to meat. And uh, why do you need protein? Well you need protein to build muscle and when you're older to prevent muscle loss. So you need to get that protein in your diet. It repairs tissues. Um, it helps you absorb other nutrients, which is very important, and it can help with things like sleep, uh, weight loss, mood, things like that. So you definitely need protein in your diet. So you've got to get protein from somewhere. So we can talk a little bit about the new Canada Food Guide. The Canada Food Guide now is much improved than the old uh, Food Guide. You can just go Google Canada Food Guide and this is what comes up and it's basically telling you now that most of your diet should come from fruit and vegetables. You are going to get your protein, this part is your protein and this part right here isn't now mainly meats, it's also got a lot of plant-based protein, things like nuts and the grains, whole grains, beans, legumes. And we're going to talk a lot more about those because I think there's a, a, a definite trend going towards things like uh, plant-based uh, proteins. And then down here you've got your grains and in this series also we're going to talk about whole grains as opposed to grains that have been stripped of all the nutrients. So uh, that's basically the Canada Food Guide. It's, uh, it's actually quite good to go on there. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of recipes that um, I guess um, capture Canada because Canada is very multicultural and uh, the recipes still don't have a lot of multicultural uh, recipes in there. And if you go around the world, some of the best recipes, some of the best um, um, healthy recipes come from places like Asia and uh, oh, well, actually everywhere in the world. So you, you don't have to go far. Everybody's got some healthy dishes. So I'm sure that um, the Canada Food Guide will be working on that in the future. There are some good recipes in there, but they're very basic. Um, we're going to take a look at some of the recipes a little bit later down the road. So the Canada Food Guide is a good resource if you're looking at a healthy diet and what to do. And, and, and I understand that in this day and age it's very difficult because we're on the move all the time, fast foods are very popular. Um, so uh, you just tend to grab something when you're on the go, you'll grab convenience foods. It's very easy to, to uh, pick up fast food, grab something from the freezer, pop it into the oven. Uh, so what Canada Food Guide is trying to say is stay away from that and uh, get into cooking. If you cook the food yourself, if you prepare the food yourself, you'll already have a healthier diet. You can control what's in your diet. So let's start by looking at a plant-based protein. Now my usual choice is either chicken or fish, but obviously there's other. There's lamb, there's pork, there's beef, but I usually go for myself to something like a lean chicken. Uh, you, we, going to trim off all the fat on this. We're going to make two very easy dishes today. Two very easy dishes that uh, with ingredients that you'll probably have in your kitchen. So if you've got these uh, in your pantry or your kitchen, you can make these dishes. So I picked these two dishes out very simply so that you could um, make these at home with little fuss or bother. You can use a fresh product too, but I used a lot of dried spices just to show you how easy it is to make these, uh, these dishes. Two very simple, very similar, but two different tastes uh, of chicken. So let's talk about protein. So the nice thing about animal protein, the, the biggest benefit is it has all the amino acids and amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So 
those 20 amino acids that you need uh, to have, um, all 20 you can get from uh, meat-based products, chicken, fish, beef, dairy products, um, you know, things like cheese. So they, all, they have the amino acid. The, the disadvantage is they normally come with things like fat and saturated fat, and it's the saturated fat that we don't want. There is a growing trend, like I said, to go to a, a plant-based diet. So these amino acids, in that 20 amino acids that make up the building blocks for protein, there are nine essential amino acids. And we call them nine essential amino acids quite simply because the body can't produce them. The body can produce 11 of the amino acids, but nine of them it can't produce. You have to get from your diet and you have to get from food. So when you look at something like um, chicken, you're going to get all the amino acids. When you look at certain grains, if you have rice, for instance, just white rice, you're not. If you have just uh, uh, barley, you're not. So you usually have a combination of rice and beans to get all your essential amino acids. Or, in this case, when you get something like quinoa, it has all the essential amino acids. And that's why it's kind of uh, one of the healthiest foods that you can eat. If you've tried it or not, it is more popular than it used to be, and we'll talk about that next week. So, we're going to look at these uh, nine uh, essential amino acids, and in this case, you don't have to worry about it. It's just the chicken that we're going to make. We're going to uh, just kind of put them into a, a casserole dish, and this casserole dish is going to get popped into the oven, and then when we pop it in the oven, it just cooks for 45 minutes at 350. And then what I like to do is just glaze it under a very hot oven to give it a nice crispy uh, coating. So there's really not a, a sauce to go with it. It's just the coating of the chicken itself. So let's start with the chicken. The chicken itself right now, we're going to take it. And what I like to do with any kind of chicken is you'll see there's a little bit of surface fat. We're going to trim that fat right off. Take the fat off and make sure it's nice and lean. You'll see that it's got no fat on the bottom. There is fat in there. You won't remove all the fat, obviously. You're gonna get some saturated fat, but what we try to do is remove the surface fat. So we'll take that. And these four pieces are gonna be the four different pieces of chicken that we're going to use. So, once we've removed most of that fat from the chicken, and I use the fat from the chicken for a stock. I'm gonna talk about stocks a little bit later on, and then we can skim the fat off, but it has tremendous flavor, so don't waste that. We'll be making a stock from it. Once we get to our uh, chicken right here, we're gonna be putting it into the casserole dish. I'm gonna make a very simple glaze. The simple glaze is quite easy. You can take orange marmalade, jam, whatever you have in your pantry or your fridge, you're gonna pop it into a bowl. I'm just going to make it for two, so I'm taking one tablespoon and a little bit of unsweetened orange juice, just fresh orange juice, but if not, just use the orange juice that you use on the morning, mix those together, and this is going to be a nice glaze for your chicken. Now when it comes to things like ginger, you can use a little touch of ground ginger if you don't have fresh ginger, just use a little touch of ground ginger from your pantry. I'm gonna say, just for two people, quarter of a teaspoon. I'm gonna use a little bit of mustard. You can use fresh mustard, fresh Dijon mustard if you want, or you can use a little dried mustard. Garlic, you can use garlic from your pantry if you want garlic. If you want to use um, uh, dried garlic, you can. If you want to use a little touch of, let's put a little touch of your fresh garlic in, just, kind of dice it nice and small and then just take the tip of the knife and then just take it and puree it with the tip of the knife and once you do that you're going to get this tremendous garlic flavor almost like a sweet and sour if you want once that's in put the garlic in and we're going to use a little low sodium soy sauce 
This is going to give you that nice sweet and sour glaze. We're going to mix this glaze all together. And that's as simple as a glaze is. Most of the things you have on hand, and it's a nice seasoning, and you don't have to use too much salt. You can just use your chicken breast. Put your chicken breast into the pan. There we go. This will hold four chicken breasts. And you just put a little bit of the glaze right over the chicken. And this then, when it, ro when it uh, roasts in the oven, will just get a nice crispy color. And like I say, once the chicken is cooked and tender after 45 minutes, I'll then put it under the broiler and make sure that it's nice and hot. The second dish we're going to make, so this is the very first chicken dish that we've got. Most of this is in your pantry. I'll give you one other uh, dish now that we're going to put at the side of it. And you can take a look, they're both very simple to make. Uh, the other one that we've got is a gratinated mustard chicken. So this one we call orange glazed chicken. And now we we're going to make the mustard, gratinated mustard chicken. So the second chicken dish is just as easy to make. You don't have to go out and buy too many ingredients. Most of the ingredients you'll have in your pantry, you'll have them available. We're going to use a little bit of low fat plain yogurt. Just pop that into a bowl. I'm only making this for two, uh, two chicken breasts right now. We're going to use a little touch of low fat mayo. So we're going to mix those two together. That'll be the base of what's going to go onto the chicken and this will just bake in there and at the end we can gratinate it. I'm going to use a little touch of mustard. Again you can use, if you've got mustard in there, a little bit of nice whole grain mustard or Dijon mustard, that's fine you can use that. But mustard will season it and that will be the main flavouring to this chicken. So if you like that mustard flavour, just add a little touch more in. We're going to add a little bit of thyme if you've got fresh thyme, use it. Usually, uh, if you're using the fresh thyme, use three, three times the amount of dried thyme. We're going to put a little dried thyme in there because it's available. It's usually in your spice rack. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce and a little bit of green onion. Now, this one probably does need just a little touch of salt and pepper in there just to give the chicken a little bit of seasoning. So we said earlier in the series, uh, we try our best not to use too much salt, just because salt tends to have the sodium, and we don't need the sodium. The three big killers in Canada is uh, salt, uh, sorry, sodium, which is salt basically, and uh, fat and sugar. So we try to cut those three out. They cause all kinds of issues. A little touch of salt then. Let's just put a pinch of salt in. A little bit of fresh ground pepper. And this is a very simple gratinated mustard chicken. So you can take your chicken breasts, pop them into, pop them into right next to the other ones if you want. Obviously if you were making four of the same, you would only need to put them four in the casserole dish. And we're just going to put this little um, topping right over the chicken. And that's it. And again, we're not seasoning the chicken. We're not putting a lot of salt on the chicken. It's just this topping that goes in. All I'm going to do now is put these two, these four chicken breasts, into the oven. It goes in a 350 oven for about 45 minutes. I like to take them out. And then I'll turn the temperature up. If I've got a little bit more glaze, I'll put a little bit more glaze on the orange glazed chicken and brown it so it gets a nice crispy coating. And I'll put a little touch of Parmesan cheese onto the chicken and I'll gratinate the chicken. But that's it, that's all there is to it. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. And there you have it. A very simple dish to make. Uh, all it is is uh, basically a, a mustard gratinated chicken. So it's cooked. So that's one flavor that you'll get right there. More of a savory flavor to this particular dish. And then you have the orange glazed chicken, which has kind of a sweet and sour flavor.
flavor to it as well. So very easy to make. They're both uh, use ingredients that you have all the time in, in, in your uh, pantry, fridge. Uses mainly dried spices. And we said a spice is kind of uh, anything that isn't a leaf. You know, it's the bark, it's the root, everything. It's the nut, it's the outer layer of the nut. So it's kind of spices and it does have lots of flavor. We've got a little bit of thyme in there as well, which is a herb. So herbs and spices is gonna give you most of the flavor. Very little salt used. And it does kind of go come inside with the Canada Food Guide. It's the meat protein of the Canada Food Guide. We are kind of pushing to eating less, but white chicken, fish is very good, and meat is very good too. I shouldn't say that meat is a good, it is very good. We're going to look at next week, following the Canada Food Guide, we're going to take a look at quinoa, one of my favorite grains, not really a grain, it's a seed, uh, but tune in next week and we'll talk about how healthy quinoa is. We'll see you next week.